So many of you have asked me about the secrets of my weapon skies and paintings. So today I'm going to spill all of them and we are going to paint two vibrant beautiful paintings. The one that you see on the left is going to be very quick. 10 to 15 minutes exercise each one of them and you will have two amazing paintings. Post that. It's all real time so you can paint along with me. If you are someone who is new to watercolors and are not aware of what I am using, I am using a sketchbook from Vibrant Parcels which is 185 GSM 100% cotton arches paper. It is cold pressed and A5 size which has been my go-to size uh, for quite some time as it is quick and easy to paint this kind of um, paintings as well as I love to paint portraits compared to landscape though I will not deny the fact that I miss painting on a landscape sketchbook which I might do very soon so yes uh, you will see more and more of experiments coming up. This particular sketchbook I have dedicated to YouTube so all the experiments that I do on YouTube I am going to document it over here. Sketchbook is a great way to document all your progress. This is something that I have been doing for many years and I would request you all to also do the same though there are many sketchbooks which are available in the market but most important aspect of keeping a sketchbook is having a good paper. If you have a good paper, the final painting is going to be very amazing. It's just that you need to understand the kind of paper that you want to own up or the kind of paper where you can get the best outcome. Watercolor is a medium where the paper decides the final outcome. As a beginner, yes, we are not aware of it much, but overall, as we progress in our journey, we get to understand that paper is the most important thing. And so many of us during our initial days are so fearful that we are going to waste so much of paper. But frankly, what I can tell you is sketchbook is something where you can paint on both the sides of the paper. You cannot tear that off. It was a kind of tendency which I saw in myself during the initial days. I will not deny that I was not so patient with this medium and I always wanted to tear off my paper whenever I did not get an outcome which I used to uh, not like. So yes, there was a lot of frustration which did build up in the process but I always uh, tried to keep calm and there were days where I did tear off a few paper but once I started using sketchbooks, I got to learn that you have to be patient with this medium. You have to give this medium some time as well as it does grow on you. There was a time where I was not happy with how my outcome was or I was not happy with how it looked. I was so demotivated once I painted something. But over the years, I have learned that watercolor as a medium did grow on me and I can right now live, eat, I breathe everything with watercolors. It's something that I always try to work on. Every day I try to work on something new, whether it be uh, urban sketching or a moody landscape, florals, anything and everything really takes my heart. By the way, the kind of palette that we are using today is a kind of analogous palette though the colors that we are using in blue and purple is not exactly the same. Though all I can say is the colors that I give towards the bottom part or what I'm applying towards the bottom part is majorly yellow. Some amount of my senior orange, red, as well as uh, some of the compost opera and coral. This Quinn Acridone Coral is from Daniel Smith and I have been loving this shade for quite some time now. For florals, whether it be for um, roses or even if you are doing any kind of fur painting that involves floral landscape, this can be something that you can look forward to. Mixing and blending of the colors is very important and this is the point where many of you always tell me that we get a lot of muddy mixes. guys one single thumb rule is to always go ahead and check your colors as well as their blending on a rough paper before you go ahead and apply it on the final paper this is one of uh, my own uh, techniques which i have been using for pretty long 
I go ahead and try this kind of a painting or the kind of colors that I want to mix on a paper and see that if my purple is mixing well with the yellow that I have or with the orange that I'm using, opera, etc. Everything I see so that I do not get those dark black muddy mixes and I really don't like it. I like this um, kind of a soft and natural shade that we get. The blending should be absolutely to the point or else the final outcome doesn't look as beautiful as it should have been. Yes, blending is a technique which um, I think uh, many of us do avoid in our initial days of watercolor journey but it's one of the most important aspect whenever you are going ahead and painting with watercolors. Start with a very flat wash that is covering your whole paper with one single wash and do not have any kind of uh, cauliflower effect or any other brush marks on the paper once you actually hone your skills on the flat wash you can go ahead and work with variegated washes variegated washes is all about having two to three different set of colors and then applying it on one paper you can try gradient washes so these all washes can very well help you to understand how you need to go ahead and apply your colors so that there is a very natural soft as well as a clear blend of colors the favorite part of the whole painting is applying the colors on the bottom area what happened is that my paper is still wet and you can see that we are just around seven to eight minutes into the painting this paper stays wet for more than seven to eight minutes till 10 to 12 minutes you can practically work on this paper without any rewetting this is something that i have experienced a lot over time and it really helps me to get that perfect blend and perfect look and feel of the sky or for the water etc whatever i need though i will tell you to go ahead with arches 300 GSM paper or else Papriano 300 GSM paper, Bahong 300 GSM paper, Blocking Ford uh, and many other papers which are available in the market which are 100% cotton. So all of these are great to start off with. Only one request, please do not compromise on the paper. Rest is fine. You can compromise on your brushes to an extent on the artist rate colors. You can pick up any artist rate colors that is available in the market. Though many of you have asked me what are the colors that I've been using and uh, it's majorly a mix of my Senelia, then uh, some shades of uh, Magello Mission Gold, Rembrandt, QOR, so all of them are pretty much there in my palette. Every pigment uh, behaves very differently so do try all these pigments on a rough paper for all the colors which you are going to use or you want to use. So the idea is to not use the same colors that you observe right now but some of the shades which are closer to what I am using. And this is a very very simple painting, it's just some brush movements. Now if you really want to learn how a brush works and what are the movements etc. Then you can go ahead and check out my class about uh, painting clouds on vibrant parcels that would uh, really help you to ace through all these paintings it is available at a very very affordable price of dollar uh, five um, as well as it's accessible for a lifetime so you can get back to these kind of lessons at any point in time here on youtube i do have a limited scope as well as people observe it for a limited uh, period of time or for a really short span of time hence i try to keep my videos pretty smaller as well as if i have to paint these two kind of skies or vibrant paintings i will usually take a class of around one to two hours where i actually explain everything in detail like how do i choose my colors from the color wheel theory to how you can go ahead and use one single brush for making all different kind of clouds etc. So uh, this whole part of uh, understanding each and every aspect comes more detail when you are taking any classes or you're going through more of tutorials.
now i would be going ahead and splattering some water uh, this is a very easy technique when your paper is wet if you splatter water the place where the pigment is you the water will actually go ahead and displace that particular part and hence uh, you will get white uh, kind of spaces which looks amazing when the paper dries off Create a few branches for your uh, trees and then I guess this uh, is done. It looks uh, so beautiful now overall. I feel the whole painting has come together within 10 to 12 minutes. We have gone ahead and added only one uh, layer for the sky as well as only one layer for the bottom area. So practically this is a single layer kind of a painting. It's just that you create the base layer of the sky, go over it with your brushes for the bushes or creating the bottom part of the horizon. That's the uh, whole uh, part. Okay, I think uh, it's time to remove the tape after this, um, creating some details. Now, these details are not very necessary. If you want to go ahead and avoid it, please avoid it. We will um, create uh, more fun in the next one. Always, always remove the tape at an angle so that uh, you do not rip off your paper at any point in time. This is very important if you are using a carpenter tape, washi tape, any kind of tape. Go ahead and do remove your tape at an angle. This uh, particular washi tape which you see in mushroom is available on Vibrant Parcels. Uh, so if you are a person who is in love with washi tapes please go ahead and uh, let us know we are there on instagram as well as uh, we have our uh, website www.vibrantparcels.com i will now uh, go ahead and change my water before i start out with the next painting only one jar of water i usually change because another jar is only for fresh supply sometimes it is required and sometimes it is not required so as a rule of thumb, I have been using two jars of water always. Go ahead and uh, just draw a horizon line and then we will start with our sky. Apply a clear layer of water on the top part of the sky and let's start painting the soft, uh, beautiful uh, sun, rice sunset, whatever you want to say. This is uh, one of the most easiest ways to paint your sun. I will go in and around the sun with my brush in a circular motion and create the soft effect of the sun. Though there are many chances that this particular place will not remain wet for a longer period of time and the whole white space might get um, completely covered with the colors that we are adding. In that case, we will go ahead and remove the extra colors with the help of the tissue. This is a very, very interesting aspect of watercolors. 
wherever you have less colors or less pigments the colors will flow towards that particular plant though there are even cases like when we are going ahead and adding the water um, droplets on top of our painting which is still wet yes the pigments do displace so there are a lot of concepts that you can apply to any kind of a watercolor painting when you are going ahead and working through them It's time to add some darker values though you know that I always love to go from lighter to darker values but overall I'm pretty happy with how the middle part looks right now. Along with it I have added a bit of clear water so that my sun doesn't look uh, as dull as it was looking earlier because the space went really small. After we have added the other pigments it's wet on wet and these kind of things do keep happening in this method so whenever you are painting any loose landscape in a wet on wet method make sure that you are using water but along with it whatever white spaces that you wanted to leave should uh, be seen and if you want that to be seen make sure that you are actually lifting out the colors as i have seen in most of the cases the place becomes smaller and smaller when you are working on an a5 size paper I will use my tissue as you have seen earlier and maybe once more to lift out the space so wherever it is needed and trying to create the glow of the sun either it can be a sunrise or a sunset I would leave that decision up to you what you want to call it but yes this is one of the vibrant skies for sure I am blending my colors right now with the help of my brush we will continue to do this and then go ahead with the bottom part I always love to move from the top towards the bottom because this leaves me a lot of uh, space uh, to actually play with my colors as well as there is uh, no way that I can actually smudge my colors. If you move from bottom to the top what happens is sometimes you might go ahead and smudge your colors which is not a great way to work with watercolors as there is very less opportunity in watercolors to get back to where it was. Once the color is applied on the paper, it's already applied. There are only few um, times or there are only a few spaces where from where you can lift it out. It's not always that you can lift it out to an extent or just like a white paper you can use it. So it has less opportunities or it gives us less freedom that way. Finally, the last darkest value, which is majorly my compost uh, palette, which I'm going ahead and using. This is a very, very deep color, which I have on the palette. And yes, I'm using the deepest value possible for my sky. You will be very happy with how I'm going ahead and using it. So yeah, let's just uh, do that. Let's blend the colors. Let's water do its job. And you can see the my... Uh, paper also doesn't buckle to a large extent why because I have firstly taped down my paper and secondly the aspect of working through a good paper is that you will see less problems with it yes it's a bit expensive compared to any other paper which is available in the market but you get the best of the outcome And finally adding some blue to complete it. In case you have observed me painting till now, you will see that I have used only a single kind of brush throughout both the paintings. I do understand that we all have constraints when we are buying our art supplies and only one or two good brushes is enough for any kind of painting that you want to do. This size of brush is perfect for an A5 paper and I have been using this for a good amount of time. It is uh, the Vinci brush and 
size 3 by 0 it is of course a more brush it comes really handy for painting any kind of clouds skies landscapes etc Time to add some white now for my uh, top part of the sunset. Though you will observe me adding the white very very less than any kind of painting but uh, I have added it for this particular painting as I was not happy with uh, how the sun turned out at the end. These kind of smaller accidents do keep happening and you can have uh, one or two easy hacks to overcome them. So go ahead and um, use it to overcome all these difficulties that you face. The sky looks super amazing and I am very happy with how it has turned out overall. The colors have mixed in a very soft and easy way. Now we are going ahead with the bottom part. The bottom part is majorly to do with how we are painting our sea. This part is one of the most simple yet tough parts that I have always uh, faced as a difficulty level in my many of my other paintings. So going ahead with it, uh, let's uh, start with uh, some of our combos opera. Now this combos opera is close to carmine or any other uh, dark pink kind of a color on your palette. I would leave the middle part in white so that uh, I can apply some of my uh, white uh, reflection of the sun. Once I have uh, created that uh, reflection of the sun I'm good with it we will start going from lighter value in the middle towards the darker value on the sides you can use some red or some orange while you are towards the middle part and some of your yellows once you go on the sides it would be more of purple and blue let's continue painting uh, this there's not much to explain in this case except the part where we are going ahead and removing the color from the paper. All I can say is this is a pretty simple exercise just that you have to keep in mind uh, there will be a reflection of the sun falling into the water which we have to keep in mind for this purpose and not only this particular purpose wherever there is a reflection into the water you need to keep that particular place as white. I think uh, that's the only necessity whenever you are painting reflections because if there's a reflection of the sun into the water, you have to add it to your painting. I always go from the lighter value to the darker value as you always know and this is also uh, around the same aspect that I'm working right now. I'm going from my lightest value to the darkest value. Lightest value I've already applied going with some purple and then with some blue. The blue that I'm currently using is a non 3 blue and I am really happy with how this blue is all over. 
Over the past few months, Elantra in Blue has become one of my favorite blues um, which I go to for any of my paintings. This way, you will also figure out a favorite blue of yours or a favorite color of yours which works amazing with all the colors and they do not produce any muddy mixes. You have to try this, get an outcome, then again try it and then get an outcome. Though I will not say that ultramarine is completely out of uh, radar. I always love to use ultramarine in most of my paintings. Having said that, ultramarine has got a granulating effect and hence whenever you are using ultramarine, make sure that uh, you are actually getting that beautiful granulating effect which makes your painting so much more complete. The last and the most important as well as one of my favorite parts in the painting is creating the waves. Once the first layer for the bottom area dries off, we will go ahead and start creating the waves. This is a very random wave creation that I am doing and there is no, I would say, thumb rule for this. You just go ahead and start painting the wave. You will add the darkest value for the bottom part which is majorly the beach area and once you go Towards the top, we will blend it with more of blues as well as with purples to get further smaller and thinner lines which will showcase something like waves but they will not be exactly the waves and hence there will be practically an illusion of waves. Yes, that's the beauty of watercolors. You get such a beautiful illusion. It looks practically like a wave you create so much more dimension in one single painting. The work of dimension looks so amazing to me and it really adds so much more beauty whether you talk about waves, whether you talk about urban sketching, whether you talk about any kind of painting. I think that the work really speaks a lot when it is all about uh, creating a lot of uh, layers within one single painting by adding only dimensions. Do let me know if you are enjoying this part of the painting. I have uh, usually avoided giving out a full flesh painting which is all about uh, painting real time along with me. But if you are enjoying this, do write in the comments. Let me know. I would come up with more videos in a month where you can get real time paintings. You can paint along with me as well as create your painting. Share it with me. On Instagram, I would be more than happy to share it over with uh, uh, everyone on my stories. So uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am there as watercolor.illustration.letter. As well as you can follow me on my uh, Vibrant Parcels account, which is www.vibrantparcels.com. As well as I am there on Instagram as Vibrant Parcels. So, Go ahead, follow me there. You will get all the updates about our products, about the new classes, courses, etc.
you will see whenever i'm approaching the waves i go from the darker value uh, from the sides towards the middle now that really helps me to create those lines and those waves which i want on water i will get reflection but there are a few places where there will be waves or there will be ripples of the water which are coming in in those specific areas you will not get any kind of uh, waves or any kind of lines or any kind of uh, reflection on top of the water so that's the area which you should always keep in mind while you are painting i make it really simple it's just simple brush movements that you need to do from left to right and from right to left if that's what you can go ahead and do i think you are sorted with any kind of painting that you want to do Doing the final detailing, adding the darkest value towards the bottom which is majorly my beach area. As I see that there is a lot of reflection which is coming in from the middle. When there is sand and there is less of water in the sand, you will not get such a huge reflection and that's what we are going to showcase even through our painting today. Once this part is done, we will go ahead and let our painting dry off. Once the painting is dried off, go ahead, peel the tape and have a look at final painting. Seriously, I am super happy with how both the paintings have turned out. Exceptionally, I would say the right hand side because we frankly have um, added so many layers within one single painting without doing much. It is done within two layers. That is the bottom area and the top area even did not need one more layer. One thing that is always there, of course, you will figure out with many artists is they have very nice, beautiful colors which are really vibrant. They always use artist rate paints. That's one of the reasons you can see the vibrancy. Finally, if you like the video, do give me a thumbs up and uh, follow me on this channel. I come up with videos every week and you have uh, so many subjects that we are going to explore next which is coming up is gouache so do keep a watch out if you are wanting to try hemi gouache i am going to explore the 56 uh, palette set in the upcoming video so meet you very soon